All right, guys, welcome back. Today, we're going to start talking about FP5, which is factoring trinomials with binomials. Now, for our directions, it says factor each trinomial as a product of two binomials. Look to remove a greatest common factor first, if possible. Not every problem is going to be able to pull out a greatest common factor, but as we learned in FP4, that greatest common factor and pulling that out first is very important. So looking at this problem, problem number one. In problem number one, since our A term is one, there's gonna be no greatest common factor to pull out. When this is the case, we just come over here and we can get to work. So we wanna take whatever this number is, we put it up top, whatever this number is, we put it on the bottom. On the sides, we always put one A, right? So remember our general factored form for this or how we use the x is ac, a times c goes up top, b goes on the bottom, and this is ax and ax over and over, and these are the two numbers that we look for. So in this situation, our a value is one, so I'm gonna have one x and one x over and over. Now we're looking for the two side numbers that multiply to give us negative 35 that add to give you a negative two. I would suggest on every one of these today, pausing the video before I tell you what the answer to those two is so that you have a chance to think about it because that's really where the learning is going to happen. So negative 35 and negative 2, multiply it to the top, add to the bottom, I think would be a negative 7 and a positive 5. Once you get those numbers, you just need to check. Can I reduce these? In this case, I can't. So my answer will be 1x minus 7. <coughs> excuse me, and 1x plus 5, which makes this my final answer. Let's look at problem number 2. Now, this is actually where we get to the new material today. If you notice, in problem number 2, there's only two things. Here's how I would suggest doing it. Whenever you see only two terms like this, figure out which one you're missing. Right now, we're missing the middle one, the term with just an x. Now, if it disappeared, that happened for a reason. So what I can kind of infer must have really been there, or I could rewrite it a different way, would be x squared, and let's just say plus 0x's. We don't have any, right? So that makes perfect sense how we can say 0x and minus 25. As soon as we do that, we've made this into a problem we're able to solve. We'll take our negative 25. That's what's going to go up on top. We'll take our 0. That's what we're going to put on the bottom. Our a value here is one, so I'm gonna have one x and one x. And now we are just looking for the two numbers that multiply to give us negative 25 that add to give us zero. And in this case, multiply to be negative 25, add to be zero, I think I would get a negative five and a positive five. Should check out, they multiply to give us this and they add to give us this. So as soon as I get those numbers, then I want to come over here and write out my factored form. So 1x minus 5 and 1x plus 5, making this my final answer. Let's go on to problem number 4. I'm sorry, problem number 5. Now when we look at this one, first thing you should notice is this 2. If there's a 2 there, we should try to factor out that 2 out of all of those terms. So when I do that, I'm just dividing it, right? So if I pulled a two out of everything, that would disappear, I would be left with just x squared. If I pulled a two out of 14, 14 divided by two would leave us with just seven x's there. And if I pulled a two out of 24, 24 divided by two is 12. This is now factorable. So we're gonna take the positive 12, we'll put it up top, and we'll take the seven, that's positive and put it on the bottom. Now, when we come over here and we start thinking about this, it's very important that for our A term, our A term is, this is what we're trying to factor right now. We're trying to factor all of this. This two has already been factored out. That's why we don't go back to the original at this point. This is what we are working on. So, when we come over there, we're gonna have our one X over and our one X over. And then we just need to find two numbers that multiply to be 12 that add to give us seven. So you can pause the video if you're actually trying 
to solve these on your own. And you should get the answer of a positive three and a positive four. That means my factored form will be one X plus three and one X plus four with the two dropping down in front. Nice job, right? So we always look for a greatest common factor if we have one. Looking at problem number seven. This one does not have a greatest common factor because our A term is one. So in this situation, we just jump into a normal problem. Negative 42 goes up top, positive 11 goes on the bottom. One X over, one X over. Two numbers that multiply to give us a pot or a negative 42 that add to give us 11, they don't come to my mind right away. So I'm gonna make a chart. So 42, one goes into 42, 42 times, two is gonna go in there 21 times, three I believe goes in 14 times. Let's double check that because I think that would be a candidate. Three times 14 is 42. So let's try three and 14. I think if this is a negative three, then negative three times 14 would give us a negative 42, and negative three plus 14 would give us a positive 11. So we found our answer. So we can rewrite this as one X minus three, and one X, since it's positive, plus 14, which will make this my final answer. Nice job. Let's keep going. Problem number nine. Hey, look, here is another one in which we are missing that middle term. So before we sit there and think about it, if you notice right away, hey, look, there's a three I could divide out of each of these. We should pull out that three. So pulling out the three, I would be left with X squared minus 27 divided by three would be nine. Now we can rewrite this piece as X squared plus zero X minus nine, right? Since we don't see any just X terms, then I can put in that there's zero of them. Now the three is still sitting on the outside of this. Now, as we come over to our X and we use that, we're gonna have our negative nine that goes right there, and we'll have our zero that goes down here. On the side, we'll have one X and one X over. We just need two numbers that multiply to give us a negative three that are going to add to give us zero. And hopefully with not too much thinking, we come up with three and negative three. So for my answer, I'm gonna have my three sitting down here in front. I'm gonna have one X plus three, and I'm gonna have one X minus three, which makes this my final answer. Nice job. Uh, this one I'm gonna flip. I'm gonna actually go over to problem number 12. Now, if you look at problem number 12, hopefully you can notice this one's weird to begin with and you're 100% right. Normally, I like to have my X squared in front of everything else and I also like to have three terms and I only got two. So, here's how we are going to fix it. Remember, we can switch this. This is the same thing as a negative X squared because the negative goes with the X plus 64 because the 64 was positive. Now, right away, I hope you're noticing this negative. We don't like to have a negative leading term. So what we're going to do is we're going to divide a negative one out of each term. So if I divide negative one out of each term, I would be left with an X squared and then 64 divided by a negative one would be a minus 64. And remember, if you ever get confused at like, hey, is what I just did okay? Multiply it back out and see that you get back to what we started with. Now, at this point, if you look at it and say, well, I'm just missing the middle term, let's put in that zero X that we're missing. And then the problem actually breaks down relatively nice. Negative 64 goes up top, zero goes on the bottom, since our A term is one, we'll have one X over and one X over. Two numbers that multiply to give us a negative 64. Well, I know eight times eight equals 64 would be a positive eight and a negative eight, and they add to give us zero. So when I come over there, my final answer will be one X plus eight, 
1x minus 8. And we just can't forget about that negative 1 that we pulled out right away. Now, I think this problem is easily probably one of the hardest, but it's really broken down into simple steps. It's just the hard part, I think, is knowing which simple step you need to do next. Right? So think about how we started this thing. We first started by switching the order, and then we factored out that negative 1 since our leading term was negative. Once we did that, we inserted our extra term, and at this point, I think any of you guys can handle this problem. I'm going to go back to 13, and then we have 15, and then we're done. So looking at problem number 13, again, I notice there's a 3 here. So what I want to think to myself is, can I divide 3 out of 22 and divide it out of 7? And in this case, I can't because 3 doesn't go into those nicely. Now, that means there is no greatest common factor here. No GCF. All of the other problems we've worked on that have had something in front like that, like this one for example, or this one for example, we've been able to divide it out of each of them. This one we can't. So if we can't, that's okay, we just gotta be a little bit more careful as we go through the process. So here's the process again. Remember, A times C goes up top, so three times seven becomes your top number, which is 21 your bottom number is still going to be that 22. Both of those are positive. On the side, since my a term is 3, I'm going to have 3x and 3x. And our job is still to find the bottom numbers. So we're looking for two numbers that multiply to give us 21 that add to give us 22. Now, typically this is a tough one for students, but if you were actually to make your list for the numbers that multiply to be 21, you would find out it's really short because it's really only these combinations. The one that everybody forgets about is one and 21. So if this is a positive one and this is a positive 21, those would multiply to give us 21 and add to give us 22. Now, as we move on with this, so my final answer here, right? I always look to see if I can reduce. I can't reduce anything there, but over here I can. Three goes into both of those two numbers so 3 goes into 3 one time, so I'm going to make that into a 1x, and 3 goes into 21 seven times, so it's going to be a plus 7 on the bottom. So my final answer will be 3x plus 1 and 1x plus 7, which will make this our final answer. Let's look at number 15 for a second. This will be our last one. Now, notice in this problem, I have a five in front. So I wanna think, can I pull five out of everything? I could pull five out of here. Two divided by five, five doesn't go into two, so that's not gonna be an option. So if that's the case, then my only option is to go through and multiply. So five times negative seven is negative 35. Positive two is gonna go down on the bottom. My A value here is five. So I'm gonna have five X over and 5x over. We need to find the two bottom numbers that are going to multiply to give us negative 35 and that are going to add to give us negative 2. So thinking about that, I think I can make this work if I had a positive 7 and a negative 5. Positive 7 times negative 5 would give us negative 35. Positive 7 plus negative 5 would give us a positive 2. So at this point, we just want to check, can this reduce or this reduce? And in this situation, it looks like 5 goes into each of these, so I can make this into 1x minus 1. So my final answer here will be 5x plus 7 and 1x minus 1. And we're done. Right, so factoring, like I said, we've been spending a lot of time on this um, because it's so important. So you're going to get time to go through. If you're struggling with any of this, please just make sure you're reaching out, everybody. Thank you so much for watching the full video. If you need help, please let me know. Thanks, everybody.